I grew up like in a country where you know musician wasn't really like something that you know the society uh, supported. East Germany was all about sport, and so for me, the only thing that made me survive actually was a tape that I had from ACDC. That was like my bridge to the outside, you know. I was listening to this tape like for for years and years and years, you know. I remember that my music teacher called my parents and said, "Well, this." This boy has a lot of rhythm talent, actually, you know. And I had, like, at this time, like, a lot of friends, you know, and they were always, like, going to Czechoslovakia. And uh, I saw this beautiful acoustic guitar, and I knew at this time that, you know, you couldn't buy an instrument, like, in East Germany. So I just bought a guitar to sell it, more for, like, a business thing, you know. So this one girl was, like, seeing me with the guitar and saying, listen, you know, you, know, you have a guitar, can you play something? I was like, I can't really play, you know, I'm just bored. And she didn't believe me, and she was, get, got really on my nerve. I was like, come on, play something, you know? And I was like, and I took the guitar and it's like, I can't play. And she was like, oh, that's beautiful. And I was like, realizing something. There was something in the air. And all of a sudden I realized it can't be that hard to learn an instrument, you know? And then from this day on, actually, I practiced like probably eight hours a day. And uh, we had one music school, like in our uh, city. And it was really hard to get in, you know? And I remember I just walked in there and I played this one song from, from UFO, Dr. Dr. Cleave. They looked at me and I come from a different planet, you know, because it was more like kind of a jazz oriented kind of place. I guess they liked my attitude or something. I definitely wasn't as good as anyone else. And so that's where I actually started to learn music or like jazz guitar, you know. But I realized really early in my life that I couldn't play other songs. So what I did, I just started to create my own songs. You know, that's what I like about music be creative and create your own songs. So that was my start in playing guitar. Well, it's one of those cliche stories, you know. I remember it was the first time at the convention in Frankfurt. It was the first time I'd ever been to a convention at all in my life. And like I saw all those guitars lying around and I, I fell in love. There was this ESP guitar 901. I remember to this day, I was like sneaking around this guitar and people probably thought I was trying to steal it or something. Because I would like walk around and walk around and grab it, like put it back and walk around and grab it again. And I was just, I really fell in love with this guitar. You know, and then I, I bought this guitar, I still have it. And since then I, I stay with ESP, you know. There's something about ESP I like. I'm a guy that loves loyalty, you know. And I think like one of the biggest strengths in ESP is like that you see, you know, like music, a lot of people come and go. What I like about this company that they're even like, if you're not hip anymore, they're still there for you. So I appreciate that, for example, you know. Besides, I created my own guitar, basically, which is always a dream, you know, kind of for a guitar player, obviously. And it was funny because like I had this special idea in my head like a long time ago, because like our shows, I would say kind of, Pyro oriented. And I was trying to explain to people in Japan, like, you know, I want to have a guitar that looks like burned. So, and they're like, well, how can we do that? It's like, you know what, just take the guitar, put it in the oven, and I can take it out. And they, were, they wouldn't do that. So I remember, like, you know, when I was first, when I was playing the 901 in the, in the early days, I had a SH4 pickup in there, and I was looking for a pickup that controls the bass a little bit more, you know, especially when you play heavy riffs as we play. And the EMG 81, like, does it perfectly, you know, it gives you this really bass control. It gives me really the control of my tone. It's a long chain that you have to try, and I spent years and years to try different combinations, like the preamp. You know, you have to find the right preamp if it's the right amp, the right speaker, and the right microphone. You know, like there was times I was like spending like a, like a day to walk up and down to my, like you know to change like like a half inch of the microphone, and I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, I'm, like spending the half day and I couldn't write anymore. So I came up with a concept where actually I was building a robot a microphone robot that I can control in my control room, basically, which actually moves the microphone left, right, up and down, and changes also the angle. So you actually control it like or like sitting in the control room and can listen, not seeing it. That's a really cool concept that I invented, basically, and that helped me a lot to find the right tone. And I still do it, but I have my, you know, favorite setup. Finally, I'm finished. I can, like, concentrate on writing songs again. <laughs>